up squared away. I don't want to move this up. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a special surprise for you this evening. This gentleman here is one of the best. He has performed from Dallas, Texas to Seattle, Washington, across Canada, and a lot of 55 plus communities throughout Florida. Recently, we've booked for three minutes in Dublin, Washington, D.C. Please give it up for a round of applause for Tony O'Connor. What I try to do in cases like this is leave you with an uplifting evening, because we're at the end. It's past my bedtime. Yeah. I want to get on to this. Um, I love golf, and I really got into it a bit. I played with Bill, uh, Bob Sweetman. Yeah, and he's a character out there. He says to me, be careful, there's fire ants over there. I said, of course, I don't work, I've got artificial legs. And he looks over and says, I bet you turn my shit the hell out of you. <laughs> and he one of these guys, whenever I'm cutting and it's getting short, he's screaming at me, get legs, get legs! Constantly. <laughs> Tells me I'm using too much right arm. <laughs> Good golf advice. But I like going with Bob to golf because I have found that in order to have a higher quality game, I take lower quality people with me. <laughs>
the ambulance crew decided this is a serious break in three places they could tell right away they couldn't take care of it so they decided to call the city they sent the fire engine <laughs> they sent a, a, a police cars they, we had about 20 vehicles out there with lights going around and I got my wife's head in my lap and I looked back up at the tee off area on 17 and these four guys say, no, if we just get to the side of them, we should be okay. <laughs> Don't do it. And they were really gracious young men. They came up right next to us, dropped the balls, counted two and hit from there. <laughs> So the ambulance takes her in the ambulance. They said I could go with him. I said, no, no, I'll be right along. I'll be right there. And Jesus' last words to me the ambulance goes out, you're going to finish playing, aren't you? I said, it's the best game of my life. I've got to go on. And you know, it's important to be honest and sincere with your spouse, guys. That's probably the most important thing in a marriage. And once you learn to fake that, man, you got it. <laughs> so, she, she said, we said it would be four to six weeks till she was better. We're on our seventh week, and I'm still doing the dishes. <laughs> All the laundry, the cooking. I go to Subway every day and get sandwiches. <laughs> And I'm doing all the work. Rehab was supposed to be four to six weeks. It's seven weeks. Now, I know my wife. And I've had this argument with her many times. You don't need to put soap in the washing machine for towels. You've gotten out of the shower. You're perfectly clean. You're just drying off. You don't need soap. And, and she got off the couch and she went to the back of the house to the washing machine. I said, I don't even walk that bad with two artificial legs. I said, I really think. So she's back on the couch and we made a little supper. And then uh, I brought her her subway out on a dish. And then we leave because I left food specs from last time on the dish. Her rehab was complete. She was up walking around and And now I must tell you, uh, maybe a little shameful on my part, but I don't think it's that unusual in men to have a midlife crisis. And unfortunately, at 55 years old, which was a few years ago, um, I met I met her, someone other than my wife, and got involved. And uh, I was seen around town with her. And I knew that my wife would find out about her. So I decided that I better bring her home to meet my wife. <laughs> this is a true story, because I handle things well. <laughs> I brought her home to meet my wife, and I, I pulled up into the driveway of our two-bedroom hallway. <laughs> We don't have a screened in porch. We have a lanai. A lanai. It sounds so much I tell my buddies up north, I have a lanai. They have no idea what I'm talking about. I filled up with her. My wife came out to two bedroom blow away door. And she looked at me and said, Where did you find her? I said, Do you remember three weeks ago? when you sent me for bread and milk and I was gone three hours that's when I bought the 92 Corvette <laughs> it, was, it was not something I planned on doing I went to Walmart to get the bread and the milk and there was this Corvette ceiling sitting in the dealership next to it and it was a Ford dealership I figured they don't want to get rid of it <laughs> and this, this is totally true. They want fifteen thousand dollars for this Corvette, and I said, "No, nah, I give you nine. And they laughed at me, and I said, "And I say, you are a Ford dealer. You don't want a smart-looking car like that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you never, you never want someone 
John mustache. <laughs> so they went in and they came out and they said, well, we'll sell it for 9100 I think they thought they got it. And so I bought it, but I was just a little scared to bring it home because money wasn't big with us at the time. And uh, I did bring it home. As I said, she came out and she gave me the look. <laughs> Every man knows the look. You know what they're thinking. You don't have to put it into words. It's like... <laughs> and you know what they're thinking. They just want to say it. And I try to explain to my wife. A Corvette is not what you think. It's an economy. <laughs> no, no, I mean, the God's not a truth. On the highway, I can get 33 miles a gallon. When I drove home to Vermont with it, I got 33 miles a gallon when I get to number 80. <laughs> and I explained this to my wife. It's a nice car. I said, it doesn't need any repairs. It's in perfect condition. It's going to be cost free. Is that good? And I said, oh my goodness, you sit in that driver's seat with a passenger seat and just wraps around you. And you get this feeling of comfort like you can't believe. And she just, okay. Well, there was a book written in the 80s. I don't know how many of you remember. I'm okay, you're okay. Well, my wife wrote the sequel. I'm okay, you're a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> and she has that other one, women are convenient, men are wrong. <laughs> and it, well, we, we don't fight. We just give each other the quiet treatment. We've been married. Look. By the way, we've been married 14,005 days today. <laughs> That's a man who's sensitive to <laughs> And uh, so we didn't fight or anything like that. And uh, I had a few years in the economy one day, and Gigi and I are sitting at the kitchen table one day, and she says, you know, we have too many cars. <laughs> I said, you're going to sell the Buick? <laughs> and I got to look. <laughs> and I said, oh, all right. And in the interest of being sincere and honest, I put an ad in the paper for a 92 Corvette, and people would call, and they'd say, how much do you want? I'd say a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> so I was out golf, and I came home around noon, and GP announced to me, there'll be a guy here at 2 o'clock to buy the Corvette. Sell it to him. We need the money. Okay. So the guy shows up at 2 o'clock, We've got to remember, with a Corvette, it's a huge front of the fenders, the hood, everything goes up at once. So I have a safety zone to speak with this potential buyer. And Gigi is standing on the lanai, watching everything. So the guy is looking at the car, and he says, well, he says, uh, you're going to need new tires. I go, oh yeah. I said, and they're six hundred dollars each. I just want to be honest with you. Uh, I said, what a, you don't have to worry about the radiator cap. I just did that. That was 150 bucks. <laughs> I said, it's a Corvette. What can you expect? You know? And the guy was thinking back, and I kind of leaned around the hood of the car, and Gigi was up there like, it's going well. And he said, well, what do you get for gas mileage? I said, gas mileage is good. I get eight, nine on the highway. <laughs> Two or three around town, if I gave you it, it's not bad at all. He says, well, what's the real reason that you're getting rid of it? I said, well, I've got to be honest with you. The doctor told me my degenerative back disease was being caused by getting in and out of it. That's all. So he said, yeah. that. And he walked. And he said, what happened? I said, I don't know. He just got up and walked away. She says, what happened? I said, perhaps it needs a little more time to think about it. And as I told you, we don't fight. So it's like 3 o'clock in the morning, a.m. And I hear Gigi's up and around walking. And I said, what are you doing at 3 o'clock in the morning? She says, I'm going to Walmart. 
I said at 3 a.m. She says, I'm going to Walmart. I said, well, hold on. I'll go with you. I don't want you going by yourself. And but I, I take my legs off at night. I leave by the side of my bed. And where I usually leave them, they weren't. <laughs> I said, Gigi, where are my legs? She said, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they just got up and walked away. I said, I said, I said, Gigi, come on. She said, perhaps you need a little more time to think about it. Now, she took off, and she was gone, and I said, well, I got you. I'll drive down, take the Corvette, and I'll go over to Walmart, too. And I looked all around the house. Now, I don't know about other men, but I don't last the whole night without getting up. And I didn't want to turn on the light, so what I do is I keep a little flashlight near my bed, so I don't bother anyone. So I've only got briefs. I don't wear boxes. I just have the briefs. No legs on, no shirt, and I'm walking around crawling on my knees around the house. <laughs> I, I looked in the closets. I looked everywhere. I'm like 10, 15 inches going by. I'm still looking for my legs and I can't find them. <laughs> I'm just shaking my head. So I go in the kitchen and I got my. <laughs> and I spot him. She put him on top of the fridge. <laughs> cold, cold. And I'm thinking to myself, this morning can't get worse. <laughs> and then it does. I get a knock on the door. And a hard knock. And it's open up. It's the police. <laughs> Come on. Only my shades, no shirt. I don't know what the cops say. And they said, open up the door now. So I opened the door and they walked in and they looked around and I said, I'm down here. I'm down here. And uh, the cops walked in, and they looked at me, and I kind of confused, I think they were. And I said, well, what, did my wife have a car accident or something? I said, no, no, there's nothing like that. Uh, are you the owner of the house? I said, yes. And they said, okay, we're, we're all set. We'll just take off. I said, hold on. You don't come to somebody's house at 3 o'clock in the morning without a reason. And he said, well, your next door neighbor, Ted, told us that there was a naked midget robbing the house. <laughs>